Sometimes that's all it takes. Second and seven, ball at the 20-yard line. Clock continues to run here as we're coming up here on 10-10, remaining in the half. Here's the handoff. Rayford again falling forward, not wanting to go down. So he was dropped there by, once again, Griff Pollock, in addition to Jeremiah Glander. So it'll be third down. We're calling it three yards to go, so third and manageable. Ball at the 16-yard line. Clock continues to run, 9.40 to go. Pickerel again under center. Oh, I think he got some most of the defensive line of Lake to jump. So encroachment against the Flyers, so that gives the Eagles a first down. And you can't afford to give them anything like that. You know, Eastwood doesn't do the hard count very often, but anytime it's third down and less than five, don't be surprised if they do it. And because they do it so infrequently, it becomes more effective. First and 10, the ball at the 12-yard line. Here's the handoff on the right side. Combs gets dragged out of, out of bounds by Scott Makowitz. As he was able to uh, pick up a yard maybe, but still. Going in the right direction. Flyers able to stop him, at least not getting a big gain. So it stops the clock with 9.21 to go. Eastwood will run wide just enough to get those linebackers to spread out just a little bit. Second and nine, the ball at the 11. The Eagles knocking on the door again. Here's the handoff. Rayford drives forward into a wall of would-be Lake Tackler, still fighting, still getting close to the end zone, almost there, and he stopped at the one. What a run by Rayford. He had about five guys on him, Norm, and was still able to drive forward to the one. Yeah, he was right in the middle of that pile. My and I think we lost sight of him a couple of times, but <laughs> you saw the pile continue to move. So it'll be first and goal here for the Eagles, knocking on the door again. But, yeah, that was an impressive run. I hope we get to see that here in a little bit. But, yeah, he, he just took on the, that. He ran into that flyer secondary and just kept moving. First and goal from the one. Pickerel hands it off. Rayford dives forward. Touchdown, Eastwood Eagles. So a one-yard run from Rayford. And Eastwood extends their lead. It's now 15-0 with the point after still to come. Well, with that previous run, you have to give you have to give him the ball from the one yard line F to finish it. Yeah, absolutely, no question about it. You're dragging half the defense with you for a ten yard run. That was just a great run, that first one, and then of course to finish it off, just uh, another physical long series uh, with a, pos a possession. Touchdown number twenty two on the season by Rayford. My goodness, so. Here's Jacob Hahn to try the point after, and he sails it through. So with 8.47 left in the half, Eastwood opening up a 16-0 lead here over the lake here on the Toledo Sports Network High School Football Game of the Week. Hey guys, I wanted to uh, let you know we had a little water problem down here. We lost the whole first quarter. The uh, hard drive just did not record. We're recording now, so if anybody's watching this on YouTube tomorrow, we lost the whole first quarter. We lost it. And it just, something happened. And uh, lights have been blinking the whole time I've been down here, so I'm a little worried. But uh, now, I don't know what happened, but we lost it. Were we online? Oh, yeah. We're online. We're crystal clear online. The game's perfect. Everything's great. I The hard drive, something happened. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It happens. I've had the lights blink twice, so. Well, that's what you get for saying everything was perfect and I going. I know, I know. I it's think you said that. Like heck. Well, that's true. I know. I brought up the <laughs> fact that he did. Anyhow. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> so, welcome you back here. Of course, those of you watching this game on uh, YouTube know that uh, we started right with the second quarter. We apologize for that. With the rain and everything, we've had some gremlins getting into the way of things as that is kicked out of bounds. A flag flies, and that means instant field position here for the uh, Lake Flyers is they will have the ball. We'll see where they spot it. Should be out at the, that the should be what, Norm, the 40? Well, what you, or 35, 35. I did want to mention what, what you, if you're watching on YouTube, what you missed is you missed a, 
Uh, first quarter safety, where Delvin Thaw, the late quarterback, tackled the end zone at the 757 mark. And then Damron with a seven yard touchdown run on an 11 play drive at the 209 mark of the first quarter. And this last drive, a nine play drive. And this is where, again, the physical play will take its toll on that lake and, and that young lake front line for now. But. Well, if, if Eastwood can go hat on hat and they keep getting first down after first down, there's no reason to change anything on what they're doing. So it's first and 10 here for the Flyers. They'll have it at their own 35 yard line, 8 and 47 to go. I am Mick. He is Norm. There's the hand. Well, Delventhal keeps it. He's going to go around the right side, change his direction, thought about it anyway, and he's just going to get dropped behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. A flag is down on top of it. Well, we'll see what the call is. But things have not been going the way of the Flyers at all tonight. So we await the official's call. Yeah, it looks like right in that area. Yep, holding against Lake. A little salt on the wound there, so it'll take him back 10 yards from the spot of the foul. You know, the thing is that this Eastwood defense as well is so strong you think that maybe running wide is uh, is an option the problem is they're awfully quick too for being a big team yeah you're right they are quick they are quick so it's first and 22 back at their own 23 and Delventhal's going to get sacked behind the line of scrimmage he gets tattooed at the end of it there just a nice shot there from Antonio Salinas Oh, yeah, they can rush the quarterback, too. Yeah, I heard. So, it's going to be second back at the 15-yard line. So, it'll be second down and 30. So, essentially, it's second down in a cab ride. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, where's that second and 30 section in the playbook? <laughs> uh, well, they're moving the ball. The problem is they're not moving in the right direction. So here we go, second and 30. Makowitz. Makowitz getting around over there on the far side. Picks up some positive yardage. So at least now they can think about throwing the ball. Well, now Makowitz is somebody who is quick enough to be able to get to the edge. And the, but the thing is, is that you've also got guys wearing red right now that are just as quick. And that's where the rubber, when the rubber meets the road, you need more guys in, in the in the white jerseys to be able to do that. And they're just – but, again, as you, I don't mean to belabor the point. They're, as you were saying, they're young. They're going to get a whole lot better. And they got a lot of upside. But the uh, Eagles right now, well, there's a reason they're the number one team in the state. And then they try to run it, and it's uh, – Makowitz is going to be dropped. So they get it out to about the 25 – and it will be punting situation here for Lake. So, well, Makowitz is very, very fast. The problem is trying to trying to get him into space. That's going to be a difficult thing to do tonight. But uh, he is. I think he's as quick as anybody in the NBC. I, I can't argue. I can't argue the point. But can you get him into space? That's that's the that's the million dollar question right there. Low snap, ground ball snap. Makowitz able to get it up, but it's going to have to take a healthy bounce, and it doesn't, so the Flyers will down it in their own uh, side of midfield at about the 46-yard line. 47, it looks like, so once again, great field position. That's the other thing, too, we haven't talked about, the field position battle here. Eastwood has had uh, uh, started a se every series they've started. They've had good field position to start. Yeah, it's, it, it's just why you can't. There, there are multiple reasons why you can't go three and out against Eastwood. One is you leave your own defense on the field way too long, and then obviously a situation like this where you get really good field position. So it'll be first and ten here for Eastwood at their own 40 or at the Lake 46-yard line. And here goes Rayford again up the gut. He'll be close to a first down. And there is just no reason to do anything else. You're right. Take I mean, a look. When you have linemen that are blocking five, six, seven yards downfield, 
and the fact that the guys tackling him are in the secondary. Not a good thing. So you got about seven yards there to be second and three. The ball at the 39 of Lake. Clock continues to run. Five and 40 to go here in the opening half. Don't forget, we'll have uh, all the halftime entertainment for you here. Here's the handoff. Rayford again. This is not a recording. First down run here for Jaden Rayford. So he gets it down to the 35-yard line of Lake. So Dylan O'Quinn on the stop, but they still move the sticks. Well, the Flyers running with three down linemen, and if you can take out that nose tackle, then it's the linebackers and the safeties that have to take on the offensive linemen, and that's a mismatch. First and 10, ball at the 35 here of Lake. Clock continues to run. Here, going around now is Combs trying to turn up field. Does. Lost, Lost the football. I think he caught a break, though, because his, t his uh, lineman up there, number 63, that is uh, Dalton Andrews, picks up that football and keeps the drive going here for Eastwood. As he goes, and we talk about the wet surface and the wet everything, as he was stripped over there. I believe that was uh, Justin Cole. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and I was just going to say, I was, I'm surprised we have not had a turnover yet, considering the conditions. And we almost had one there. And we have all, almost had a couple on the on the punts, low snaps. Mm -hmm. Four and a half to go here in this first half. And first and ten for the Eagles. Or no, check that. I'm sorry. Second and four. As they go up the gut. And it is Rayford once again. And it is going to be... Let's we'll see where they spot the ball. Should be close to a first if... It's going to be less than a yard, it looks like. So third down. That time, Jeremiah Glander, number 64, along with Dylan O'Quinn, hit tell, Rayford early. Tell you what, of all the players out here, I mean, there are a couple players on Eastwood that I'm just, I really think the world of. I love watching play. And, of course, uh, one of them wears number 26. Here's a handoff to McCauley as they go forward, picking up the first down and then some. But the other guy I also like to watch play football is in uh, white and blue wearing number 15. Dylan O'Quinn, is he's not your traditional big man, so to speak. He is a guy that puts up good numbers. He does all what he's supposed to do. I mean, he's 6'5", 255, but he is, he's quick. He's not the fastest guy out there, but he's just, he's quick. There, you, know, I, I, you know what I mean, Norman? I mean, there's a difference between fast and being quick. Good first step. Yep. And that's what it is. So first and 10 at the 18-yard line. Here's the handoff. Now going around the left side. They even faked me out on that one. Is going around the left end was Damron. Might have a light hit. Yep, and the, you could see that flag go straight up in the air. Thing I thought it was like hit with a baseball bat, pop straight up. But they marked it down out at about the four. So let's see on the replay here. As he fakes the handoff to uh, Rayford and then Damron. That's one on one to get around the corner. Yeah, he gets by Pollock. And then as he goes and he is tattooed by Osborne out of bounds. So it'll be half the distance. So it'll be first and goal at the two yard line. 3.14 to go here in the first half and the Eagles looking to add to their lead. Guess who? Guy as if on cue. A touchdown run there for the Eastwood Eagles, courtesy of Jaden Rayford. That would be number 23, I believe, on the season. He is. As he just plows ahead straight up the gut forward. Not Really not a whole lot there that Luke Walsh could do. So they add to the lead. And I'll tell you what, uh, Han is going to attempt the extra point here. And... The score, if he makes it, will be 23 nothing. But you got to admit, it looks it, it could be a whole lot worse. And I think the fact that it's only 23, soon to be 23 nothing, is pretty good. <laughs> As Han, he's got a solid leg, you can tell. But he sails that one through the uprights. And with 3.09 to go here in the second quarter, it is Eastwood 23 in the Lake Flyers nothing. You're hanging out here on the Toledo Sports Network, and we'll be right back. Benches Greenhouse and Nursery in Elmore, Ohio is a proud sponsor of Northwest Ohio Athletics. 
Our spacious greenhouse area has what you need for your outdoor beautification projects. With great specials and those hard to find plants, shrubs, and trees, Bench's Greenhouse and Nursery takes the guesswork out of planning and maintaining your favorite garden and more. Bench's Greenhouse and Nursery. Call them today, 419-862-3596. Well, don't forget too, if you want to advertise here with the Toledo Sports Network, by all means, Give us a call, 514-1302. Throw a 419 in front of that. But 514-1302 is the number to call. You can talk to Mike Jamison, and he has all kinds of advertising packages that are suitable for every budget. I am Mick. He is Norm Weimer. Of course, uh, most of you know him as the voice of Powerbomb Wrestling. We must have had a uh, personal foul on the on the kick, on the, on the point after. Yeah. Because uh, Eastwood's going to kick off at the 45. Oh my! Want to mention too, Headline Construction being on board tonight. New construction, renovations, roofing, siding, windows—they do it all. 419-467-8289. That's 419-467-8289. Call Todd Henline, and they are also on Facebook. Here's the kick. It's going to go and take a bounce into the end zone, so it's a touchback. And it will be first and 10 here for the Flyers at their own 20. Well, Norm, you know, the other thing, too, is that, I mean, the part of it, obviously, with the kick from the 45, frustration can set in in a game like this where you're you're being outplayed and it's 23 nothing. Things aren't going your way. Frustration can set in, and that's where... Poor decisions can be made. One yard total offense so far from the Flyers. My goodness. Well, Eastwood probably had their worst game of the season last week. Yeah, I was going to say they got it out of their system. And <laughs> so. you know Craig Rutherford's going to say, boys, that's not going to happen again. Here's the handoff now. Walsh on the right side. As he's dropped. And there goes their one yard of offense. <laughs> oh. My goodness. Dropped over there by number 28, Antonio Salinas. So. You know, as much as recognition as the Eastwood offense gets and, and rightfully deserved, I think what gets overlooked at times is how good this defense is. Oh, my goodness. That thing, they, they are physically bruising, and they get off the ball quickly. Smart, and they play their assignments. Now they go up again through there's Blake Osborne and he's driving forward picking up some well at least they're picking up positive yardage again. So it'll be third down. We'll see how much farther they got to go. Looks like about three yards. Well that was the best run of the night. Yeah. He picked up about eight on that carry and Osborne is a terrific back. This is probably going to be his last game of his high school career. But and uh, he is he's gonna fight for every single yard. Well, I hope he gets a chance to play somewhere on Saturdays next fall. Here's the pitch on the left side coming around. Uh, I think they're going to be short. Yeah, I think you're right. It was a nice idea. It was, I believe it was Makowitz that was a ball carrier, but they're going to be just a couple, about a yard and a half short. So fourth down again here for Lake. You know, with a minute and a half, you're down 23. Do you consider going for it? Can't do it. <laughs> Every yard has been difficult to get. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe they've gotten a first down tonight. Uh, no. No, no. I don't think they've – well, they haven't even gotten 10 yards total offense. So you can't get a first down unless. Good snap that time. Much better snap. Makowitz. Sails that one. Ross had trouble, but able to pick it back up. Avoids a couple of flyers. Keeps going. We got a flag. Man, that, that was that the back judge? Yeah, the official threw the flag and uh, almost fell. I was going to say, it looked like he was trying to go for distance on that one and ended up nearly taking a lap of honor at midfield. But we've got a flag on the play. Clock stops, 56 seconds to go. They spot the ball as Ross was brought down at the 40 two-yard line. It looks like it's coming back. Yeah, that'll be on the Eagles. So the play is... Uh, Blocking the back. Yeah, you never like those. As you see right here on the replay, Ross 
struggles with it, but picks it back up. Avoids one, two, three, and then he is tattooed and right there. Right there was the block in the back. Yep. As it was, uh, Hayden Rogers had his hands on him initially, and then you see the flag come in from about a 20-yard toss. <laughs> So it's going to be first and 10 here for the Eagles at their own 32, 56 seconds to go. Ball is handed off, and over on the left side, they keep driving forward, and that has got to be Mr. Rayford. And, of course, Jaden Rayford is continuing where he left off. Of course, like we said, they've, uh, they've got weapons here to spare with, uh, with this team in terms of running. I mean, you think of Ian Downard. You think of uh, Mr. Combs. You know, Cooper Combs, uh, guys like that that have been, they have just been outstanding. Plus, you've got Justin Rayford, or rather Justin Pickerel, the quarterback's brother that you think about. So it's second and three after a pickup of seven. Rayford breaking free, gets outside. Flag down. Yep, Another this one, one may be coming back. Oh, he's still He's running. still going. He gets down to about the... I don't know, until the 25. Yeah, two Great. flags down, one at midfield, the other one at about the 35. So, That's coming back. Nah, it's too bad because that was a pretty darn good run. So a block in the back. And holding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take your pick. I was going to say, so with uh, all the laundry on the field, that takes it down to five seconds. But you look at the run, though. The run itself was still pretty darn good. Well, he's got pretty good speed, too, and... Uh, by my count, he was at about 270 yards last week against Genoa. And again, he's just a sophomore. Yeah, that's the thing that blows my mind is he's just a sophomore. But he ran, you're right, he ran for, let's see here, 284, 37 rushes for 284 and four touchdowns. So with five seconds to go, they may just take a knee here. Yep, that's exactly what they're going to do. Here's the snap. The knee is taken, and that is the end of the first half. Well, it's been the Jaden Rayford show here, but I tell you what, the Eastwood Eagles have been playing all around very well as they have a 23-0 lead over the Lake Flyers, and it's the Toledo Sports Network coverage of high school football. Stick around. we got the halftime show coming up next. Blackberry Corner on the corner of 579 and Elliston Road is a proud sponsor of Genoa Football and has the best burgers, chicken, and pizza. And you know the pizza. Everyone knows the pizza. Blackberry Corner also has charbroiled pork ribs and Jim's famous chicken dinners. Whether it's appetizers, pizza, or a full dinner, the great folks at Blackberry Corner can help fill you up and save you money. Stop out to Blackberry Corners on the corner of State Route 579 and Elliston Road for a meal or just a snack. When the power goes out, your life is disrupted. Heat, air conditioning, refrigeration, phones, all gone. Want to take back control? A Generac Home Standby Generator protects your home against power outages every second of every day, all year long, automatically, whether you're home or away. Control your power, control your life with a Generac Home Standby Generator. For a free estimate, call Schneider Sons Electric, 419-691-8284. Adler Transmissions and Brake Shop, 106 South Main, Walbridge, Ohio. Your automotive parts and accessories number one store. Your first stop for quality transmission repair for over 25 years. Adler's Transmission and Brake Shop has been providing Walbridge and all of Northwestern Ohio with quality service. Adler's Transmission and Brakes, 419-666-1010. Proud sponsor of high school sports in Northwestern Ohio. Mortgage Marty here. There was a recent survey and uh, found very consistently with past tendencies that the number one impediment to buyers being able to purchase a home was down payment. Uh, we've got some options for down payment assistance in our area. In fact, there are quite a few programs available right now and heading into the winter, many of them still have money. So you'll see scrolling across your screen uh, information, text assist to that number and we'll get you information on the down payment programs. No obligation, just basic information. Uh, to help with different programs that are available. In fact, they're not all just for first-time home buyers. There are even some for move-up customers. So if you're thinking of selling your home and then buying a new one and don't have a lot to use for a down payment, uh, this can supplement that. They are great products. Uh, there's conventional FHA, VA, rural housing, the full gamut of mortgage options available with the down payment programs. So text that and we will get you some info. 
From the kitchens of Italy to you, Arturo's Pizza Kitchen is the home of authentic Italian food. As one of the oldest independently owned pizzerias in Toledo, Arturo's Pizza Kitchen has been serving since 1988. With pizza, salads, award-winning subs, chicken chunks and wings, mom's own lasagna recipe, and our famous cheese sticks, we have it all. Never frozen, always homemade. Arturo's Pizza Kitchen. Hungry? Call Arturo's, 419-698-1641. Hey, it's Bob France. Are your clubs cleaned up and ready to go? Then let's talk about Brandywine, the only all-inclusive private country club in Northwest Ohio. You know, people are always taking all-inclusive vacations to save money. Well, at Brandywine, you're on a constant all-inclusive vacation. Unlimited golf, cart, pool, fitness, and all the social events, including the amazing pool parties. It's so refreshing to play a private club where there's no surprises. The new Brandywine Country Club, featuring 18 holes of Arthur Hills Design Championship Golf on a layout that is spectacular. Par 72 now, three par fives on the front nine total yardage of 6639 a challenge for great golfers but fun and playable for the rest of us too and one of the best things about joining the all-inclusive private brandywine club is that you never have to wait for leagues to get out of your way because there's only one league at brandywine yours and don't forget about the amazing restaurant champions bar and grill reopened in the summer of last year and is now open to the public call 419-865-2393 for all the details and if you join by may 31st they'll waive the initiation fee join me on the course and at the club this year at the all-new all-inclusive brandywine country club You've planned and planned. Each moment of your special day just has to be perfect. You don't want to worry about anything. Just know that you've hired professionals to make your wedding day special. Mike Jamison with Creative Video Imagery has produced award-winning weddings for over 15 years. Our company has the equipment and the artistic ability to capture your day on digital DVD, giving you lasting memories of a day you will cherish forever. Call Creative Video Imagery today or visit our website, Creative Video Imagery, making moments into lifetime memories. Tires play an important role in your vehicle's handling, comfort, and fuel efficiency. So when it comes to maintaining them, you need a name you can trust. At Dan Ars Automotive, our expert staff will help you find the perfect tires to keep your vehicle at peak performance. We have a huge selection of top brand tires for you to choose from. Having issues with your tires? We'll diagnose the problem and get you back on the road. Visit Dan Ars Automotive today for tires from a name you can trust. Do you ever drive around the neighborhoods just to look at the houses? I like spotting the ones that have been around the longest because they remind me of the amazing legacy I'm part of. Hi, I'm Marty Sutter, president of Genoa Bank. For over 110 years, our bank has helped families buy and build their homes. And all that time, one thing hasn't changed. At Genoa Bank, we believe that when we put the mortgage needs first, the rest takes care of itself. Genoa Bank, taking your banking needs personally. Stop struggling with the big box stores. Choose Gladio. Store, yet so much more. Your home improvement cancer store. A place to design your interior space. A professional and friendly smiling face. Everything you need for your home. And Gladio is locally owned. There is only one place where you'll find scenic golf at affordable prices. Fall and Timbers Fairways. This golf course offers some of the best golf in Northwest Ohio for any skill level. At Fall and Timbers, they can help you plan for your next outing or event, or even improve your skills with their talented golf instructors. With their exceptional rates, Fall and Timbers is your first choice for great golf. FallandTimbersFairways.com. Easy to find, fun to play, right off Route 24 in Waterville. FallandTimbersFairways.com. Fall and Timbers Fairways. Are you dreading winter? Then let TAS Electronics upgrade your vehicle's existing factory key fob into a remote car starter. Or, for unlimited range and versatility, Drone Mobile put your smartphone in control. You'll get features like keyless entry, instant security status, and real-time GPS tracking wherever in the world you are, instantly on your smartphone. This winter, forget the freeze, feel the heat with TAS. TAS Electronics, it's hot.
They are for the Tucson is proud to partner with Ethan Bandersis. We take great pride in supporting the Eastman faculty, the students, and their families. They are for the and would like to support, would like the opportunity to serve you with any of your automotive automotive needs. We are five franchise family dealership location located in North Main Street in Bowling Green. We look forward to seeing you soon. For all your automotive needs, St. Thayer and Bowling Green. Thank you, Mr. President, and proud to support Easter Band. Also, thank you to Ernie Mar Marcella for his contribution to the show. Go Eagles! Twist and roll, tackle and creep. The witches are cranky with chaos to read. The innocent scream and the dead will sing as we enter the hall of the mountain king. Thank you. 
watch as vampires and zombies lurk near the spooky music that the dead can hear. Beware when the howling horns may blow and the eerie creases in the movie Psycho. Thank you. 
I'm assuming uh, Lake isn't doing a band tonight. I'll take that as a no. The winner of tonight's 50-50 was Neil, Neil Badenhop. Congratulations to Neil, and thank you for all who participated in tonight's 50-50. Here's some scores of interest, and most of these were at or near halftime. It was Genoa 22, Bostoria 14, Elmwood and Woodmore were tied 8 and 8, Otsego 6, Rossford 0, and Patrick Henry is currently leading Liberty Center 20 to 6. Here are the winners of the Eastwood Girls Basketball Quarters of Cash Contest. The first quarter winner was Rose Jones. So if Rose Jones is here, you can report to the to the press box, you've won $125. And winning the second quarter of cash in the Eastwood Girls Basketball Contest was Diane Cherry. Diane, you won $175. Again, if either Rose Jones or <coughs> Diane Cherry are in attendance, please report to the press box to receive your money. Here's some statistics, unofficial statistics, for the first half of action. First down, Eastwood 12, Lake 0. In the rushing department, the Eagles ran the ball 33 times for 170 yards. The Flyers ran the ball 12 times for five yards. Total plays, Eastwood 33 for 170 yards. Lake 13 plays for a net of five yards. Individual rushing, Jan Rayford led the Eagles, 19 carries for 99 yards. And Simeon Damron carried the ball six times for 36 yards. Recap of the scoring in the first half. The Eagles scored first on a safety with 8.06 remaining in the first quarter that made it Eastwood 2, Lake 0. With 7.51 remaining in the first quarter, Eastwood completed a 12-play, 52-yard drive to final seven yards by Celia Damron. Jacob Hahn added extra point. It was Eastwood 9, Lake 0. First play of the second quarter, Dayton Rayford pumped it in from a, year, from a yard out, completing a 9-play, 51-yard hey, drive. Um, go back zero. like at two minutes. How much time he got? Two minutes. Ah, well, then bring it back. Uh, oh, wait a minute. This is the warm up. Is Dave back or is he still with you? He should be back. Oh, you're there? Okay, Dave, when we tear down tonight, uh, last thing we do is unplug the orange cord for me here, because I have no lights down here, so that'll be the last thing, okay? Got it. So far, so good. Yeah, I lost that whole first quarter in about two minutes of the second quarter. I don't know what happened. It just quit recording. It's 
I had it I had it hidden because I had the title box up there so I was when I was doing first downs and everything and I looked and I'm like you've got to be kidding me so oh well you guys covered it very nice bye 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 and Eagle Band, another reminder, if you'd like to purchase tickets for next Friday night playoff game, again, that game is at 7.30, pre-sale tickets, $8, yeah. in the high school office, Tuesday through And we welcome you back here to Eastwood High School here in Pemberville. Well, we've got one half in the books. It's 23 nothing. Eastwood leading Lake. I am Mick. He is Norm. Norm, throw me some stats, buddy. No, so, I mean, let's be honest. It was all Eastwood. Okay, yeah, that's a given. It's not real complicated here uh, for Eastwood. They did not attempt a pass in this game. 32 carries, 161 yards. The leading ground carrier, Jaden Rayford, 18 carries for 94 yards, including a couple of touchdowns. Uh, Ceylon Damron, seven carries, 36 yards, and a touchdown. For uh, the Flyers combined, they had 12 carries for nine yards. Uh, one pass attempt, it was incomplete. There were a couple of sacks in there as well. Uh, Scott Makowitz, four carries, 12 yards. Blake Osborne, four carries, six yards. And you add in the uh, the two sacks, the one Delvin Thaw sacked in the end zone for the safety that lost two yards, and the other sack that lost eight. And you got 12 carries for nine yards, so 13 plays total for Lake in the first half, 32 for Eastwood. Oh, my goodness. And no first downs for Lake. Well, if they keep this up, they're going to be they're going to be introduced to a running clock. Yeah, if we get the 30-point lead, uh, it becomes a running clock. Well, they have to kick off here in the second half because Eastwood won the toss to start the game, but they deferred. So we know that uh, the Flyers will be kicking off. Yeah, and the conditions have not changed. No, they've worsened. <laughs> it's been raining ever since we got here. I think it's picked up just a little bit. Yeah, I went I went out to go use the little broadcaster's room, and uh, <laughs> and uh, trust me, it it did it it from when I got here from when I got here to uh, where it is now. It's gotten colder, a yeah. little bit. The winds picked up a little bit. And most importantly, it has rained. It has been raining a little steadier. Not hard, but steady. When this, right before this finally ends, on the very tail end, there could be some snowflakes mixed in, according to the weather forecasters. Pretend meteorologist Norm Weimer. No, it's, yeah, you're right. I mean, so. But you no, know that's not my forecast. I know, I know. I just think it's fun. I that's think. those with uh, degrees. And a in meteorology. Yeah, but it's still it's still a guess. <laughs> but you're right. Absolutely no question about it. It's going to be inclement, to say the least, as we await the kick to start this second half from Nick Chapetta. It's going to be grabbed at about the 11-yard line, up over the 15, the 20, the 25, dropped by McCauley, got dropped at about the 27-yard line, and that's where the Eagles will scrimmage first and 10. Yeah, Jerron Henry with the tackle. That's a nice open field tackle. Let's take a look at number 10 coming in here from the outside, and bam, right there. My goodness, that is a good. He didn't, I mean, he just was, uh, and he was, he, was, he was losing his balance a little bit there, but he still had the presence of mind to finish the job. We can, we'll see how the, the Flyers, any kind of uh, adjustments they make at halftime. They can execute here on the field as it's now handed up the gut. Breaking through again, McCauley. Or I'm sorry, Rayford. Rayford drives forward and picks up about seven. Blake Osborne in on the stop for Lake. And that will get him over 100 yards. So it was a pickup of eight, second and two. And my goodness. He had Osborne just basically going along for the ride on that carry. Full backfield here. Here's the 
Handoff to Rayford, driving forward again, picking up the first down and then some, as he'll get it out over the 40-yard line to the 42. Justin Cole was in on the stop there, so it'll be first and 10 for Eastwood. Well, the Flyers only gave up about five yards of play in the first half, which is not that bad. They were left with uh, such bad field position to start. And that's what it's been. That's the big difference is the, is the field position. And it's just been methodical here. Mm -hmm. Now McCauley this time swings around the right side, is able to pick up maybe a yard, if that. He was dropped down over there by Nick, or uh, Justin Cole, rather. Tried to do a little off-tackle play. Change things up just a little bit. I would imagine they'll go butt right back up the middle again. Tell you what, Lake, I mean, they've had a rough go of it here, but a couple of guys have, I mean, like, you look at uh, Griff Pollock and Justin Cole, a couple of guys like Damian Allison, they've had they've, they've been playing pretty solid here, but, man, when you're playing against uh, this machine here, I'm telling you what, I'm really impressed with this Eagles offensive line. There you go, right up the middle again, Rayford. Rayford oh, loses the, the football. Out. And are they going to say he's down, or did he lose? Yeah, I think they're marking it down. Well, oh, this will be an interesting uh, replay here. Boy, it did shoot out of there, though, yeah, didn't it? Yeah, it went like a rocket. Let's take a look. Rayford takes the ball. Yep, right up the middle. Got hit right there. Tough, was, tough was, to call. I was going to say, if we if they had video replay, you couldn't really reverse that, I don't think. I think he was down. Third and a yard. Mm -hmm. He was down, though. Okay, third and a yard to go. <laughs> they went to the hard count and almost drew them off sides. They're, they're <coughs> good at that. Here's the handoff again. Guess Rayford who? drives forward, picks up the first down. But well, he got as far as well, he'll spot it at the 47-yard um, line, it looks like. So it'll be first and 10 here for Eastwood. Clock continues to run here with 9.45 to go. 23 donut. Excuse me? It's a 23 donut. It's, it's a sport. It's a Canadian sports term. Sorry. I won't take a, your word for it. It's a, it's, you know, anyway. No, we're not sponsored by Tim Hortons, but <laughs> here's the handoff. Rayford again. This time he's met right at the line of scrimmage. You can see everybody over there trying to knock him down, but Rayford, man, he is just refuses to go down as Dylan O'Quinn and Jacob Benson in there on the stop. We are sponsored in part, though, by Headline Construction. New construction, renovations, roofing, siding, windows. Call 419-467-8289. That's 419-467-8289. Call Todd Henline for all your home construction needs, and they are also on Facebook. So it's second and ten after no gain by Rayford, one of the few times he's been stopped. Here's the handoff again to him. This time he drives forward on the right side of that wall and is able to pick up about three yard line, about three yards, maybe two to three. He'll spot it at the 45, so it'll be second or third down and eight. As the clock continues to run, 8.25 to go here in this third quarter. Of course, we talked about the running clock. Well, the thing is, is that with uh, Eastwood, because they don't use the sidelines very much because they're not throwing the ball. It pretty much is, in essence, a running clock. Well, it's third down, eight to go. Ball at the lake, 45-yard line. Here's the handoff going over on the left side there, Damron. But he'll be stopped short of the first down. And Allison again on the stop here for... The Flyers, he's had several key tackles here tonight. Yeah, it looks like Eastwood's going to go for it. Yeah, and a night like tonight, I can see you can see that. They've just been so methodical in what they're doing. Punning can be awfully dangerous on a night like this. Yeah, just ask uh, Scott Makowitz. Here we go, fourth down. Six to go. 
Oh, my look. goodness. Look at that. My goodness, what a run there. Is Raybert just let go or just cut through. And I tell you what, if he could have kept his balance, he would have been in the end zone. As he just drives through, he just does not stop. Well, one of the keys to being able to bounce off tackles is to be leaning forward. And when there's nobody there, sometimes you will, you will take a tumble forward. But that leaning forward is the thing that got him the first down. That is true. First and 10 here, the ball at the lake, 34, 650 to go. Here in quarter number three. Fumble. Uh-oh. Picked it back up. No, I was going to say, Prickle picks it back up, but he is dropped for a big loss over there by number 79, Joe Mutzler. Or Mutza. I'll get that right. M-U-E-T-Z. Big loss here for the Eagles. Loss of nine. Wow. As you can see, just couldn't get the handle on the football. And that one you got to blame on the weather. So Mutza got his hands on him and brought him down. So it will be second and 19. The ball at the 43 of Lake. So we're coming up on six minutes to go here in this third quarter. Macaulay dropped, but, or I'm sorry, Ray, Rayford picks up a few yards. He moved so quick there, I didn't, I just was like, whoo. So it's right at the 40 of Lake. They need to get it to the uh, 20, about the 24. 24, yep. So here we go, third and 16, five and a half to go here in the third quarter. The hand or rolling out with it. Pickerel gonna keep it. He's gonna get close. Can he get there? He's gonna be close to a first down. He did, I, I, I'm wondering, did he do that on his own or is that, was that a design? I think that's an option type of play. And it wouldn't surprise me if it's a straight run call. I don't know if we can take a look at it again. You see a couple of the linemen pull into that side, but you don't see a receiver out that way. No, not at so all. So I'm not sure if the rush is the thing that forced him to take off, but there's no no uh, receiver in that area. So it wouldn't, be, wouldn't surprise me if it was a run. And he's going to be about two yards short, but uh, it's four down territory. Once again, they're going to go for it. So the Eagles fourth and about two, ball at the 26. Here is Rayford going up the middle, fighting his way through. Picks up not only the first down, but plenty more as he is in the red zone. My goodness, they'll spot the ball at the 13-yard line. Oh, let's, the... let's watch this again. This is this is a thing of beauty. Stumbled right there, but kept going. I was going to say he was able to pivot. Even though he stumbled, he was able and to pivot that right foot. You cannot tackle him above the waist. That is the one thing they have to learn is, yeah, you cannot – Attempt that with him because he will he will burn you. First and ten, the ball at the thirteen yard line. Here's the handoff. Rayford again going right up the gut. As he is dropped there by Justin Cole. Just so strong. Pickup of about three. Well, we'll call it two. Second down or five rather. Second and five. Ball at the eight-yard line, 3.40 to go. Rain still continuing to fall here in Pemberville. He's had 10 carries in this third quarter. We still got three and a half to go. You know, again, Rayford driving forward. My goodness, and he makes it into the end zone. My gosh. What a run there by Jaden Rayford. He just took that one on his shoulders and earned every bit of that touchdown run. Three more TDs tonight. My gosh. He is uh he's been he's been something. He has been something special. Rayford has not he, he's not done anything flashy. He just works hard. That's what I appreciate so much about that young man. He just works really hard and keeps his legs moving. 11 carries, 65 yards in the quarter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So that's 29 carries for uh, 159 yards by my count. 
Here's the point after attempt from Han. And Han puts it through. So with 3.18 to go here, it'll be a running clock when we come back. It is 30 to nothing, Eastwood over Lake on the Toledo Sports Network. Conveniently located in downtown Rossford, Ohio, the law firm of Heben, Summer, and Murphy is there to serve your estate, business, and litigation needs. Heben, Summer, and Murphy is a proud sponsor of Rossford Athletics. Contact the law firm of Heben, Summer, and Murphy at 419 662 3100 or on the net at www.hsm law.net. Go Bulldogs. Well, Eastwood has slowly and methodically taken care of taking care of business here tonight. They lead it 30 to nothing. Been very impressive with what they've done after the struggle they had last week with Genoa. You know that Craig Rutherford was not going to have to go his uh, have his charges go through that again. So here's the kickoff that's grabbed over there by Justin Finley as he goes on the left side. As, I'm sorry, that's Makowitz as he brings it out to about the 35 yard line, and that's where Lake will scrimmage first and ten. Well, it's so disheartening when you know what they're going to do and you still can't stop it. And that's exactly what Eastwood's doing tonight. We're going to run right at you, and you have to stop us. And until then, you know, uh, no question about it now. Of course, I'm really interested to see what happens, though, with the playoff pairings, too. We'll talk about that in the fourth quarter. Right now, the business at hand, it's a running clock. As Blake Osborne is dropped, got back to the line of scrimmage, it looks like, if that may be a yard, but that's about it. So it is a, a yard gain. Dalton Andrews in on the stop, but it'll make a second and nine. I want to make sure we thank a couple more of our sponsors here, of course, Arturo's Pizza and, of course, TAS Electronics. So it's second and nine, the ball at the 36 of Lake. Clock continues to run. And this time they don't even get back to the line of scrimmage. As you can see right there on your screen, big number 63, Dalton Andrews, in on the stop once again. That young man, you know, he kind of reminds me of, he's not as tall, but he still, in terms of his tenacity, reminds me just a wee bit of a guy that played for Genoa a few years ago that now is playing for the University of Wisconsin, one Michael Dieter. Yeah. Wore the same number back then, too, 63. Well, no, he wore 73 for Genoa. He wears 63 now. But still, here we go, third and 11. Delventhal going to throw it, but to nobody in particular. He had Osborne over in the general area, but... Um, that one was just, uh, that was a, what they call a hurry. Well, if <clears throat> Eastwood maintains number one in the in the region, and there's no reason that, that they shouldn't. They would play the whoever finishes eighth. Now, Genoa came in at eight, but uh, if you look at uh, Steve Junga and his projections, and he is very, very good at this, his projections have uh, Genoa ending up at number seven in Liberty Center, ending up at number eight. That's if Liberty Center wins, though. Correct. And uh, as of uh, a little while ago, I heard uh, they at the half they were not winning. They were being uh, beaten by Patrick Henry. The flag yeah, is cool. down. But a great return here. <laughs> it's out near midfield. Well, ironically, the team that's behind them, and it's projected for number nine, is Lake. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. It, well, I mean... That would be a tough one, I think, if you're Lake, because if you're going, I mean, if, if you end up at number eight somehow and you're going back-to-back -back weeks with these well, guys. Actually, the, the minimum points that uh, Liberty Center would end up with is 12.6, and Lake would end up being, uh, in the projections, they're at 12.4. So even with a loss, Liberty Center would be ahead of them. So just... And the thing is, is that Liberty Center is not a bad team. So Liberty Center can get in even with a loss. Yeah, late for Lake, pretty much their only chance was to 
they had to do they had to come in here and shock some people but there are others that have a chance to move up not sure who Swanton's opponent is tonight but they have to win if they oh, want no to have question. a shot no question first and 10 at the 33 and a win doesn't necessarily get them in no that's right there has to, uh, several things have to happen in that but as it's a first down run as Justin Pickrell in the game now running as we mentioned him earlier briefly well you're, you're gonna get uh, they're gonna rotate players in at this point uh, boy the last thing you want to do is have somebody get hurt in a situation like this right before the playoffs yep now, end of the quarter then yeah, so hey when we come back, we'll talk more about what's going on here as it is 30 to nothing here at Eastwood Leading Lake and the Toledo Sports Network High School Football Game of the Week. At Genoa Custom Interiors, we provide quality service at competitive prices. We offer a variety of flooring and interior design options customized to fit your needs. From carpets to hardwood, no matter what type of flooring you desire, we have what you want. Our designers will show you how to set up furniture, flooring, window treatments. Contact us today for a free estimate for any of our interior design, installation, and services. Genoa Custom Interiors. Genoa Jewelers, 611 Main Street in Genoa has been serving the area with quality jewelry and gifts for over 19 years. Specializing in gold and silver repairs, Frank Comais has been a goldsmith for over 30 years. Our selection of Pulsar watches, precious moments figurines, reflections beads, seraphim classics, and quality stellar rings, all at a price you can afford. Genoa Jewelers also buys gold and silver and has the perfect gift for that someone special. Stop out today at Genoa Jewelers, 611 Main Street in Genoa. Welcome you back as the first play from scrimmage here, and they're going to air it out. Pickroll, he's got a receiver on the right side that goes incomplete. Dammer on the intended receiver. He had coverage. He was in uh, double coverage over there, though. One of the guys, uh, of course, Luke Walsh and Hayden Rogers also over there as well, but it goes incomplete, second and ten. Interesting uh, play calling there, considering they have not thrown the ball all night until now. See, Swanton would need a win to get in, but they're playing Archbold. Yep. Uh, Huron would need a win to get in, but they're playing 7-2 and two Edison. Not likely to win that game. Yeah, I was going to say, Edison's the team, I believe, that uh, defeated Eastwood last year. So don't be surprised if it's Liberty Center. Well, here we go. Second and ten. Comes in motion. Here's Justin Pickrell. Loses the football. And, well, that's the first mistake here tonight for Eastwood. And, uh, of course, the weather had something to do with that, I'm sure, as they lose the football, and it's recovered by the Flyers. Yeah, let's take a look. Right up the middle, carrying the ball a little loosely in his right arm. Yeah, he got tagged over there by Cole. Justin Cole hit hit him. You really need two hands on a night like this. Yes, you do, sir. So a turnover, that means it's flyer ball. They'll have it first and 10 at their own 45-yard line. First. And amazingly, the first turnover tonight. Mm -hmm. And the first drive that they've had uh, where they are starting in good field position. Now, Blake Osborne trying to fight his way through the middle there, up close to midfield. It'll be picks up about three yards and dropped at about the 48. When Lake is doing well, Osborne will get 20, 25 carries, maybe even more on a given night. Tonight, six. Well, there's not a whole lot you can do when you're, when you're getting smothered by that Eastwood defense. My gosh, that is an impressive defense. And the thing is, is they're fresh because they haven't had to be out on the field that long. Their offense has sustained such long drives. Now, granted, a uh, number of these guys play both ways, but still. As Osborne drives again forward, but he'll pick up maybe a yard, and that's about it. Justin Pickrell over there in on the stop along with Tyler Smeltz who had the big play last week to seal the win for Eastwood against Genoa. Officials trying to do their best to keep the ball dry. Still hasn't placed it down yet. I was going to say good luck with that one. <laughs> well, you're like... doing the best you can. It's lightened up a little bit now. But it's still, still rainy, but not nearly as hard as it was. Third and six. And well, 
the idea was right, but uh, yep, Salinas shut the door on that one before it could even get started. So that makes it fourth down. Well, you got three guys pulling on the play. Well, two guys pulling on the play, but nobody blocking, and he came right in behind the two guys that were pulling. He said, you're going to give me that space? Hey, great, I'll take it. Drops him all the way back to the 41. So it'll be fourth down and 14. Wow. It's just not Lake's night tonight. And again, as much as you can say that, also it's because of how strong and how impressive Eastwood has played. Lake's going to call a timeout. 8.24 to go here in this one, and it is 30-0, Eastwood leading Lake. Hey, golfers, come play Toledo's premier public course, Heather Downs Country Club, is where you belong in 2017. Heather Downs is a beautiful 18-hole layout with stunning views. Tee times are available seven days a week with great rates. Want to work on your game? Our driving range and practice center is the best place to groove your swing. Try individual lessons with golf director Dan Sutton. Clinics are forming now. Go to heatherdowns.com or call 419-385-0248. Heather Downs Country Club, where you belong in 2017. Yeah. Hey, don't forget, catch us each and every Saturday morning from 8 to 10 on WTOD ESPN 106.5, the ticket. Yours truly along with Mike Jamison, Dave Truman et al. Fourth and 14, here is Mackwitz's kick. It kicks a low line drive. It takes a nice bounce though and scurries down the field. <laughs> You're Eastwood, you just get away from the thing. So it's going to be spotted at the uh, Lake 25. So it'll be first and 10 there. Game tonight sponsored in part by Headline Construction. New construction, renovations, roofing, siding, windows, they do it all. Call Todd Headline at 419-467-8289. That's 419-467-8289 for all your home construction needs. And they are also on Facebook. So it's first and 10 here for the Flyers at their own 25. Running clock going with the 30-point lead, 7.45 and counting. So the Eagles, I think I said Flyers a minute ago. It was actually the Eagles with the ball at their own 25. Been a kind of a punching, punchy night as they go up the gut. And Patterson, the ball carrier. So, yeah, you're, you're seeing some of your younger kids getting some playing time here, Norm. And, well, that's a good thing in a, in a situation like now where they get a chance to um, see what they've got with the game essentially well in hand. Yeah, Brody Patterson's a junior. And you, you just don't want to get anybody hurt on a night like this. All it takes is just a slip in the mud and... And disaster could strike when you hope. Now, the good news is on a night like this, you can't get a lot of speed up in the first place. That's it's true. So wet. That's true. But yeah, one slip and. He's going up the gut again. Brody Patterson once more. That'll be close to a first down. They're about, looks like uh, about a long yard, maybe short two to go. So they need to get it to the 35, just on the other side of it. Clock continues to run. Now, interestingly, Lake will fall to six and four, but the four teams that they'll have lost to will all be in the playoffs. All in this region, by the way, too. Eastwood, Archbold, Otsego, and Genoa. So it looks like they're all going to make it. Genoa was leading at halftime in their game. And that's what, I mean, you, again, Lake is, wasn't expected to even do what they've done this year as that one is run up the gut, and it's so number 45, that is Gage Might, Might a freshman, 5'10", 197 pounds. He is mighty. Fourth and one. But Mark Emmons has done a, a, a really good job here with the Flyers as far as uh, exceeding expectations. Oh, and you got to be excited for the future. I don't think there's any question about that. Well, here we go. They're going to go for it. On fourth down. Yard to go. I think they're trying to draw. 
drum off sides. Yeah. But it's procedure. So they'll take it back five yards and they'll kick it away. So with five minutes and counting remaining here in this one, um, of course, Lake, their season will be done, but the Eagles will continue next Friday night. We should have that game for you right here as they will be here to entertain most likely if uh, we trust uh, Steve Jung is... Uh, We're thinking Liberty Center, but you know, they won't become official until obviously uh, sometime tomorrow. So stay tuned. Or sometime on Sunday, really, because yeah, there'll be some say. Saturday night games. Kick, fair catch is called. Okay. So it'll be, fir it'll be first and 10 here for a lake. They'll have it at their own 39-yard line. So a decent kick there. And, uh, well, 421 to go. And I would think, though, you get in Division 5. I doubt there's too many Saturday night games with the smaller schools, not like some of the bigger schools and other than D1 and the, the big, the three, the big C's. three C's. Yeah, Columbus, Cleveland, Cincinnati. I thought you were talking about Chillicoff. Come on now. <laughs> Anyhow, <clears throat> looking forward to playoff football. It's going to be a lot of fun and exciting. And it's nice to... And, you know, we talk, oh, my gosh, that defense for Eastwood. They have just uh, been ferocious all night long. And you can't help but be impressed by it. Yeah, let's take a look. McCauley, the first one to stick them. And the rest of the gang all joins in, including Salinas. Also up. This area, though, is going to be loaded with teams in the playoffs. That's, and, and see, that's, a, that's what I was getting going to get to is the fact that the fact that, you know, you think about the three C's and, you know, all the football hotbeds that they talk about is Blake Osborne dropped behind the line again. But the fact that Northwest Ohio is going to be so well represented, I mean, in different divisions, not just here in five with the number one team in the state in Eastwood. But, of course, I mean, Whitmer, Genoa, Central Catholic, yeah, exactly. Anthony Wayne. Uh, looks like they're going to be in. Uh, how long has it been since uh, Northview's been in? I was going to say that is the big surprise to me, Northview. I mean, I never thought that the Wildcats were going to ever get back into it. Wauseon's got a chance. Uh, Archbold's going to be in. Mm -hmm. Got to see Archbold against Lake earlier in the season. Otsego, Genoa. Here's a handoff, and Osborne trying to keep the legs churning, but when you go against that big red wall over there, it's – it's tough to get any kind of real estate. Liberty Benton, Gibsonburg, Macomb. That's a team that kind of I'm kind of like in the in the periphery. I'm I'm kind of worried about a little bit is Gibsonburg. I mean, just what what which team is going to show up? Because they've got the talent. They've got the talent out there that they could they could make some waves. Here we go, fourth and 11, punting situation. Makowitz gets a good snap, gets a good kick, and it will take a bounce. And Ross will just get away from it, and it will be down. Let's see, the 19-yard line, it'll be marked. So it'll be first and 10 there for Eastwood with 1.57 to go. Well, Norm, we're about done here. We've got a minute 57 to go. Um, you and I don't get to do this very often, uh, but I tell you what, it's been fun, bud. Appreciate it. Yep. Well, somebody's going to be here next week. Well, I'll probably be. <laughs> Gee, wonder why. <laughs> but uh, so we might as well be. And uh, I tell you, it's. Um, I think the thing that I'm looking forward to the most is I want to see. I want to see how. I mean, we saw it last week with Genoa. We saw the, the, the I guess, for lack of a better term, the adversity that Eastwood was able to not only uh, face, but overcome. I want to see what they do when they get uh, some of these challenges from some of these schools that are traditional, you know, big-time schools in D5. You know, if this, this falls the way uh, Steve Junga had it, uh, Genoa would be going to Archbold next week. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> that, you, my goodness. I don't know if I want I, – oh, man, that's so tough because it's so nice because for so long we only had, like, just one or two teams that would make the playoffs if we were lucky. 
Well, Archbold had that loss really early in the season, and they've been rolling people since then. Yep. And they are really good. That's why I'd, I'd love to go see that game. They are second in uh, in Region 18. And who knows, for regional final, you couldn't have Eastwood and, and Archbold. And what fun would that be? Well, fireworks would fly for that. Well, they take a knee here. And that might be somewhere in, uh, in the Toledo area, too. I could see them playing that at a Central Catholic or something like that. And that's looking, you know, a few weeks down the road. But You'll say, quit teasing uh, me, Why Norm. not? <laughs> Norm, quit teasing me, man. Why not? That would be fun. Don't, don't do that to me. Well, that should be the last play of – well, they got one more snap to do, and then that's it. Well, Lake, I think, can be really proud of their season. And it's a team loaded with sophomores, as I mentioned, just seven seniors on the squad. Uh, a winning season is not something that they, I don't think most expected from them this year. So they can be very proud of what they've done on the season. And, and for Eastwood, you know, the, the game they had against uh, Genoa last week may be the best thing that ever happened to this team, that they know that if they get in a tough situation, they can still win the football game. And, and they came out tonight, and they played they played impeccable tonight. Yes, they did. So, well, hey, your final, Eastwood 30, Lake nothing. Congratulations to the Eastwood Eagles as they are the outright 2017 NBC champions by winning tonight. They're, they have the outright championship, and, well, they'll be playing some playoff football here next Friday Ho night. Hopefully they're playing five more games yet. Yeah, that's the key. Five is the magic number. So, hey, for our hardworking crew out there getting wet and cold, we appreciate the work that they did tonight. Mike Jamison out in the production uh, trailer, we appreciate it, bud. And for Norm Waymer, I'm mixing. So long, everyone. Your final once again, East with 30, Lake Nothing. You've been watching high school football here on the Toledo Sports Network. Good night. Good night.